Hello, and welcome to Cuyahoga Arts and Culture's 2024 Project Support Panel. I am Maya, and I am here with fellow CAC staff, Devon, our co-chair, as well as Laura, Julia, Jill, and Jake. Some of them might be listening on the audience side. For audiences joining us online, you can find the captioning by clicking the Show Captions button at the bottom of your page. Thank you to our applicants for serving on our interactive public panel learning about our process, applicants, and funding criteria, and thank you to our listeners for joining us. Cuyahoga Arts and Culture is the local public funder for arts and culture in Cuyahoga County. Our mission is to inspire and strengthen the community by investing in arts and culture. The goal of our project support grant making is to promote public access and encourage the breadth of arts and cultural programming in our community by supporting Cuyahoga County-based projects. And we can go to the next slide. Thank you. Before we begin, we want to acknowledge that the land that we stand on and the place that we call Cuyahoga County is land that was claimed by the United States government through force, displacement, and treaties negotiated in bad faith. We acknowledge those of the Shawnee, Miami, Erie, Ottawa, Potawatomi, and Haudenosaunee Confederacy whose lands we stand on and the thousands of Native Americans representing over a hundred tribes who currently live in Northeast Ohio today. We thank the Lake Erie Native American Council for helping us to develop this land acknowledgement. We also wanna take a moment to lift up CAC's value of equity. We choose to lead with racial equity in our work because the creation and perpetuation of racial inequalities is embedded into government and grant making. We confront the white supremacy that resides in our work because racial inequities across all indicators of success are deep and pervasive. We also recognize the power and potential that organizations who produce arts and cultural programming have as bearers of culture. These institutions have the power to write the narrative about who belongs and who is valued. We encourage arts organizations to connect with resources to advance equity in your own work, um, you can visit cacgrants.org slash equity to learn more. It's important to note that CAC does not make grants or funding decisions on the basis of race, color, sex, gender identity, sexual orientation, national origin, religion, disability, or any characteristics protected by law. I'd like to, at this time, introduce our executive director, Jill Paulson, with some words for our panelists and applicants. Good afternoon. Thank you, Maya, and thank you, everyone. My name is Jill Paulson, and I'm the director here at Cuyahoga Arts and Culture. My job here is to give you just a little bit of context and then make sure I thank the people doing all the work today, which is basically panelists, my teammates, all of you who are applicants. So again, I'll start, start with that piece. But on behalf of our board of trustees and our full team, I do want to welcome you all here today. Um, our panelists who are joining us virtually, and those of you who are listening, either the public in general or applicants, please don't be nervous. We're here to cheer you on, and we're excited about the success that you will have both in this process and moving forward in the grant year. Um, this is also live streamed, as we said, and will be recorded and um, on our website in the future. We had a great day of first panel yesterday. Here we are today starting at one Eastern time and we'll do the same thing tomorrow, Wednesday to close out Project Support 2025. Panel really is an important embodiment of CAC's values, our commitment to trust, equity and stewardship. It's a chance for us to put it into action. It's one place in our work where we feel like our values are clear to the community and we welcome you here today. It's important to note that the panelists are all experts, um, those that are here and those that are on other panels as well. I think you'll be impressed when you take a look at their bios and we appreciate them taking time out of their busy day um, to donate and you know give their time and expertise. It really means a lot. They use funding criteria that were the exact same funding criteria that all the applicants use. So hopefully panelists, as you use that language, and I know our chair, Maya, um, will keep us to that, but as you use that language throughout the process, the applicants and those listening online can also hear that same language, right? So we're creating a place where folks can understand each other 
and um, have a lot of success. It also ensures that we center our primary funding criteria, which if you know CAC, you know it's public benefit. So as we move through the questions today and the discussion, you can learn more about our panelists at our website at cacgrant.org slash panel. So I said it at the beginning, but it's worth reinforcing here now. Thank you, thank you to the panelists, to those of you here today and folks listening online, either due to illness uh, or otherwise, we do appreciate the work everyone has done, the hours of work that you have put into this, the expertise that you bring. You really do help shape our work um, both throughout the review and afterwards, what you say matters and helps us get better. Thank you for spending time in the applications. To our grant recipients and applicants, I also want to say thank you. I know it takes a lot of time. I know some of you um, have spent extra time this year um, not going through what we call bypass, but doing this process. So no, we value you. We appreciate the work you're doing to make sure that uh, residents in every zip code in Cuyahoga County have access to arts and culture. So thank you for the real work that you do. And then last but not least, I wanna thank my teammates who are actually doing all the work today and who have done all the work on panel leading up to this process. We're talking six, nine months, everything from guidelines development, creating and developing the online tools, building the systems, walking every single applicant through the support that they need. So I am grateful to my teammates, Jake, Devon, Julia, Maya, and Laura, for all the work individually that you do and as a team. It's it's really impressive and amazing. And I know it's gonna lead us to a good panel day today. We had success yesterday and can't wait for tomorrow. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back to Maya and let you all uh, continue on the process. I'll be watching on the audience side, cheering everyone on. Thank you Thanks. and good luck. Thank you, Jill. At this point, I'll ask each panelist to introduce themselves. Please share your name and gender pronouns, and where you're located and your professional connection to arts and culture. Um, they're pasted in the chat and we'll start off with Joanne. Hello everyone, my name is Joanne Lawrence. I um, am joining this panel from Atlanta, Georgia, where I am a grant writer and just as a general nonprofit professional. Um, I'm a consultant as well as um, uh, well, just a consultant, <laughs> and I do a lot of work for many of the arts agencies here, as well as other human services and different agencies like that. Thank you for having me. And I am Melissa Aston. I'm located in Chattanooga, Tennessee. My pronouns are she, her, and I am the manager of grants and community engagement for Arts Build. Hi, everyone. My name is Tom Werder. I'm executive director at Morris Arts. I live in Denville, New Jersey, where I'm calling from today. Um, my pronouns are he, his. Um, and I have been executive director of uh, Morris Arts, a local arts agency, for about 12 years now. And before that, I ran uh, professional theater companies and a modern dance company. Um, I've been in the nonprofit um, professional uh, administrative world for uh, decades now. Um, and I'm happy to be here today. Thank you. Thank you to all of you. I just want to echo Jill's comments. We really appreciate the time that you're spending with us and sharing your knowledge and expertise with us as panelists. Um, I do want to note that we are down a panelist today. One of our reviewers was unable to join us this afternoon because of illness. And we will continue our review as planned, but anticipate integrating her scores and comments after the review meeting. And we'll be in touch with applicants and panelists around this. Now I'll walk through how the review process will work for those following the live stream. I will introduce each applicant organization and project. I'll then lead the panel through a discussion focusing on each of our funding criteria at a time. Uh, panelists will be invited to comment on applications in relation to funding criteria, and we'll have three minutes for public benefit, two for artistic and cultural vibrancy, and two for organizational capacity. Our panel co-chair, Devon, will keep us on track with time using the PowerPoint on the screen. Uh, we have allocated eight minutes for each application. To keep things moving smoothly, panelists should plan to come off mute to indicate that they'd like to be the next to speak. Um, I might also call on panelists to speak if need be. 
After we go through the criteria, the panelists will submit their scores, which are tabulated by CAC staff. To our applicants, please do not contact or address the panel in any manner during the deliberations electronically or otherwise. If an applicant believes that a panelist has presented incorrect information regarding their application, they should complete the information correction form, which is available at cacgrants.org slash panel um, and within the audience guide, and I believe we'll also drop it in the chat. CAC staff will review the correction form to determine if it is an objective correction of misinformation. If it is, the panel chair, myself, will read the correction to the panel and for the public. An example of objective misinformation would be a panelist misstating the number of performances detailed in an application. This is an opportunity to clarify what was submitted with the application, not to provide additional information. After the panel is complete, audience members are encouraged to participate in the public comment session by submitting comments via our online form at cacgrants.org slash panel. The deadline to submit comments is at the conclusion of the project support panel deliberation, um, the end of the day today. Now let's get started with our first review. Um, our first application is from America Scores Cleveland, and I'll give our panelists a moment to pull that up and make sure that we're ready to go. And I'll pause briefly in between each application so that you guys have time to adjust to the next application as well. Okay. Our first application is from America Scores Cleveland for their project titled America Scores Cleveland's Power of Poetry. Power of Poetry will engage third through fifth graders within the Cleveland Metropolitan School District after school for 12 weeks as they study, explore, create, and perform poetry in the fall of 2025. Led by local educators who serve as trusted mentors and coaches, participants will advance their creative writing, teamwork, and public speaking skills and have the opportunity to perform team and individual poems during a culminating community-wide poetry slam event. Would someone like to get us started around how this application relates to the public benefit criterion, which is an organization's ability to meaningfully connect with its community through its project? I'll get us started. I'm Melissa um, in, in the realm of public benefit. I noted that it's free and open to the public. It's the SLAM aspect is on a bus line. Um, an after school program is um, beneficial to parents who um, work traditional hours and their kids are being enriched by the arts. Um, they mention anti-racist and non-discriminatory practices. And I was curious to know more. Um, but it does appear that they've been doing this um, for a long while and likely are great in those aspects. Um, I, uh, I also uh, scored this as strong in public benefit. I love the idea of poet athletes, um, the sense of individual skill development, as well as um, the team building that happens amongst the, the teams of, of the um, poet athletes. Um, I found that it was a strong use of volunteers or coaches and uh, professionals and a, and a solid um, collaboration with Lake Erie Inc. Um, and this all contributed to provide strong public benefit. Um, I thought adding, uh, I'll add the self-esteem, self-expression, self-value for the young people as they grow, that is definitely a public benefit. Um, and, and also the connections to the community that they are making. We can move on to artistic and cultural vibrancy, um, which is an organization's ability to create a relevant and engaging project. Um, I can start here. I thought the, um... The application uh, showed a strong commitment um, uh, to uh, vibrancy and, and the provided curriculum um, was, was interesting and showed that um, they were receiving feedback from participants throughout the process. Um, I'd like to know more about how the feedback 
uh, is incorporated. I think that would have made the application a little bit stronger. Um, I love the video that was included that showed poet athletes in team uniforms and, and energy and excitement about their participation. Um, okay, so I also thought that using the professional coaches added to the artistic vibrancy, um, using those partners from the other agencies made that strong. Um, I really did enjoy that video that they had. I thought that really highlighted the work that they're doing. Um, and I do think that they're able to pay the artists who are coming. So that also you know, shows that they're a strong agency. And this is a strong program. My comments are similar to Tom and Joanne's. Um, artists are being paid, coaches are being supported through training and mentor support. Um, so mine are similar comments. We will move on to organizational capacity and organization's ability to successfully plan for and manage its project. Okay, I'll go first this time. Um, they train their staff. I thought that that makes that that's good. They use an evidence-based curriculum. Um, they explained how they were going to match their funds. They gave us a timeline, and it does very very much appear that the young people have a sense of belonging to this organization and to each other. I noted um, that they do have strong goals. Achievable, achievable goals, partnerships are present, such as Lake Erie Inc. Link. And I found um, that there was a clear commitment to a team approach to delivering the program. They have years of experience with an evolving curriculum, that strong commitment to DEI. Um, the application could have been a little bit stronger for me um, if um, there was some explanation about what the earned income or the fee for service of $12,000 that was noted was for, um, but I did rate this as strong in organizational capacity. And, and that concludes our time for America's Scores Cleveland. Um, panelists, please submit your scores and then we will turn next to Cleveland Arts Prize in just a moment. Our next application is for is from Cleveland Arts Prize for their project titled 2025 Verge Fellowship Program. Verge recognizes developing artists from the greater Cleveland area across all disciplines whose work demonstrates exceptional promise and innovation. It contributes to the enrichment of the local arts landscape, bringing to light the unique perspectives and creative expressions of individuals who may not have received adequate recognition until now. The emphasis on inclusivity reflects a dedication to breaking down systemic barriers and creating a more equitable platform for artists to thrive. Would someone like to get us started around how this application relates to the public benefit criterion, which is an organization's ability to meaningfully connect with its community through its project? I'll get us started um, in, in the realm of public benefit. The notes that I denoted um, has a number of community partners. One of the events is located at the LBGTAQ Community Center of Greater Cleveland. Um, had a tremendous response in 2024, 167 applications. Um, and so they obviously are getting responses. Um, they were were they transparent with applicants on the number of spots available? Did those did they set the expectations that is a very competitive um, project? It appeared to me for the public benefit that um, they have um, sort of a committee that comes together to choose these artists. I thought that was a, a, a plus. Um, 
I like the fact that they pay the artists or they're giving them a prize. So I think that's great. Um, they get professional development. There's no fee and there's no fee to apply for the program. And uh, I, I found that the application um, identified emerging talent of color as their community to be served by this grant, um, and that all genres and interdisciplinary artists were sought. I thought the combination of the award stipend, but especially the wraparound services that were offered um, was, was really appreciated. Um, they, they mentioned public showcases of the winner's work at community partners as part a key part of the program. I think it would have made for a stronger application if we could have seen some examples of these showcases. Um, maybe they haven't happened in the past, so that's why we didn't see them, but um, it would have made it a little bit stronger there. I thought the commitment to inclusivity and belonging was strong. I rated the public benefit strong. Next, we'll move on to artistic and cultural vibrancy. Um, which is an organization's ability to create a relevant and engaging project. Who would like to get us started? I'll get us started on this one. For the artistic value, I think that building that community amongst those prize winners in order to have a future um, artistic base is, is a great thing for this agency to do. Um, I'll go next. Um, in terms of artistic and cultural vibrancy, um, one of the questions I held was um, the $2,000 stipend, at, is it enough to fulfill the requirements of producing art and also integrating all of the professional development opportunities? Um, so hopefully this program will grow um, as it becomes even more solid. But I agree with what Tom has said. It's a great opportunity for new and emerging artists, especially with all of the wraparound services to develop their skills. And um, I rated this application fair in uh, vibrancy. I thought the application would have been stronger if there was a more detailed description of the services that were planned to be provided for the prize winners and how these might be differentiated based on who the community partner was and who would provide them. I thought there was a fair description of the utilization of uh, past fellows and the plans for including these fellows on the Cleveland Arts Board. Um, I rated the vibrancy as fair. Great. We can move on to organizational capacity an organization's ability to successfully plan for and manage its project. I'm happy to go here. Um, I, I was a little confused about the project budget. It showed $23,000 of expenses shown along with $26,500 of income. Um, and so the requested amount is 50% of expenses, but additional income is possible if this grant is fully funded and as well as the Cleveland Foundation grant as well. So I was a little confused about that. Um, the planning for this project is impressive, as is the leadership capability of Asia Jones. Um, the list of community partners was also impressive. I would have appreciated knowing the details of their involvement. Um, I rated the uh, or organizational capacity as a high fare. Well, for me, the the I thought that they, you know, coming in, they seem to have a strong leadership team. Um, it does seem that maybe the um, program leader is the personality behind the um, prize itself. And she's the one bringing together the uh, diverse group of jurors and artists. And so um, my thing is like, is that sustainable? That it's sort of you know one driven by one person um, that can get an agency kind of in, in a little bit of trouble. So hopefully they will bring somebody alongside of her to work in the future so that they can sustain this process. 
I rated in terms of organizational capacity on the low end of strong. They do have um, diverse partnerships, um, but I agree with what others say um, as well. They have strong team members and a history of success. Great. Any other comments for organizational? We will move into um, Cleveland Chamber Choir. So I will give panelists a moment to submit your scores for Cleveland Arts Prize. Okay. Our next application is from Cleveland Chamber Choir for their project titled Synagogue and Salon, the Hebrew Psalm and Madrigals and Salman Rossi. In March of 2025, the Cleveland Chamber Choir will present seldom heard music by the trailblazing Italian Jewish Renaissance composer Salomon Rossi and then record selections from this concert music that has never been commercially recorded for an album. They will be um, they will collaborate with Hazamir Cleveland, a youth choir that fosters the opportunity to learn and sing Jewish choral music. Would someone like to get us started around how this application relates to the public benefit criterion, which is an organization's ability to meaningfully connect with its community through its project? I'll get us started. I scored them in the strong category in terms of public benefit. Um, I noted that not only is this organization elevating choral art, but in the process or concerts are raising money for other nonprofit organizations. So they're integrating a lot of great public benefit. Concerts are free or pay as you go. I too um, scored this as strong, again, same. I, I echo um, the donations back to the community, the efforts to recruit diverse um, singers and board members um, to engage, they're engaging youth choirs and they are um, performing music that's rarely heard. So that's um, definitely a, a public benefit. Um, and I also rated the application as strong and public benefit. I, I noted the partnership with the local charity, uh, Hazemir Cleveland, and the commitment to support and give back to local charities, as, as Melissa mentioned earlier. Um, and um, I like the fact that they define their community as music lovers, particularly choral music. Um, I like the description that choral music fosters connections because it links us to the human voice and by extension, human feeling. I just love that description. Um, choral music, therefore, it helps create a sense of community identity. It's just, um, it just said um, a lot about what they're attempting to do and I appreciated that. Um, the live streaming and attention to ADA accessibility was a plus as well, so that's strong. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we will move on to artistic and cultural vibrancy funding criterion which is an organization's ability to create a relevant and engaging project. Okay, I'll go first here. <laughs> so for the, again, for artistic vibrancy, I did score this as strong. Um, it seems like the professional artists are well-trained. They are um, also training the youth choirs as they come along, or at least by um, working with them, they are training in essence. Um, the artists are paid, they do use surveys, and, and the art, the same thing I say for public benefit, this is rarely heard um, music. So that is an artistic practice in my mind. Um, I also like the fact that it seems that this the whole program was developed as a result of audience feedback that they received and, and just kind of shows um, strong vibrancy um, as a result of that. Um, I think the relevance to the community is really valued and comes through in the application. Um, so I thought it was strong and, and vibrancy. I also noted um, them strong and vibrancy. I'll echo some of the comments that Joanne and Tom have said. 
Um, they optimize community feedback to steer this next step of programming. Um, and there's an effort to pay artists equitable wages. Thank you. We can move along to organizational capacity and organization's ability to successfully plan for and manage its project. I'll get us started. I rated them strong in organizational capacity. Um, items that I noted, there's a clear timeline, experienced leaders, and multiple methods to garner feedback. Does anyone have anything new or different to offer there? That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, Joanne. Okay, we can conclude our time with Cleveland Chamber Choir. Panelists, please submit your scores and we will turn next to Cleveland Chamber Music Society, which I know is a close name, but <laughs> um, in just a moment. Okay. Our next application is from Cleveland Chamber Music Society for their project titled Jerusalem Quartet Shostakovich String Quartet Cycle. CCMS will present the Jeruz Jerusalem Quartet in performances of the complete Shostakovich 15 String Quartet Cycle in five concerts over nine days. Performances will take place at the Cleveland Museum of Art Gardner Auditorium Tie-in events such as lectures, films, exhibits, masterclasses will be hosted in various locations throughout Cuyahoga County. Would someone like to get us started around how this application relates to the public benefit criterion, which is an organization's ability to meaningfully connect with its community through its project? I could do that. Um, I appreciated that the masterclasses and other events are free and that concerts um, were reasonably priced with an active use of, of complimentary tickets that are distributed by ambassadors and comps offered to community partners. Um, the a pay what you can ticket is also available on concert nights, but I was unsure about how that aspect was communicated to audiences. So it would have been stronger if I, if I understood that. Um, I thought that CCMS is very clear about the communities that wish to engage, subscribers, pre-professional music students and area youth, the future audiences. So I thought the public, public benefit was strong. Um, I also put um, them in the category of strong for public benefit. On top of what Tom has said, in addition, there was there is transportation assistance to seniors and students. They do have a publicist to help market, so hopefully draw in more community. Um, and then about the, you know, the pay as you can, $5 tickets that Tom mentioned makes it more accessible. Um, same thoughts. I would just echo if I said them out loud. So <laughs> ditto what they just said. <laughs> strong, strong. And, I, and I thought it was a strong, strong public benefit. Beautiful. Next, we'll move on to artistic and cultural vibrancy funding criterion, which is an organization's ability to create a relevant and engaging project. Okay, I'll get us started here. Um, they pay their artists. I thought that was great. Um, I think that rarely heard music is a very good thing for the public and for, for the artists themselves to produce. Um, they do try to reach out to underrepresented artists. Um, it does seem like they take um, surveys of in attendance to know where they stand with their audience. I'll go next. Um, in terms of artistic and cultural vibrancy, I have scored them in the strong category. On top of what Joanne said, I also noted 
um, themes of oppression, resilience, and desire for freedom, many things that um, we um, nationally, internationally are talking about right now, um, multiple opportunities to engage with music background and the artists involved. Um, I um, Something jumped out at me from the application where they say that our concerts are places of connection and community where artists and audiences enjoy um, together moments and emotions that are fundamentally human. Um, and um, and yet are, transcend are transcendent. I really enjoyed the way that described what they're trying to do at their concerts. Um, I thought that the activities that were planned to engage audiences before and after performances to deepen these connections are also evidence of, of strong um, vibrancy. Artists are paid fairly. There's an active board supporting the work. I thought the artistic vibrancy was strong overall. Great. We will move forward to organizational capacity and organization's ability to successfully plan for and manage its project. I'll get us started. Um, a lot of it will echo what has already been said. I have rated them in the strong category. They have a strong board, um, a strong team of artists. They have hired or have been working with a publicist um, to help them market and strengthen, you know, audience um, participation and things of that nature. I think that it's, I think they are the strong, strong in this organizational cap capacity section. I also think that um, they, like they say, they use critical reviews and social media as part of their feedback. That's probably important at this point in time. Um, and then they also use their ticket sales and their attendance. And I do think their leadership is also strong and their artistic base is strong. And um, I noted their uh, reference to their healthy endowment and that the project would take place regardless of the success of this application. Um, I guess that could be good or bad when applying for money, but um, I appreciate that the organization is um, in good financial standing. Um, they're already planning to take $20,000 from their endowment as part of their support for this project. Um, I, I noted that in the uh, data arts report, they commented about um, the 91% change in net assets as a result of a calculated strategy to reduce investment income relative to other earned income. So they seem to be concerned about their 501c3 status and, and um, they're taking some action um, to, uh, to make sure that they can remain a 501c3. Um, that is evidence of uh, a strong capacity to be thinking about those things. Um, and, um, and I appreciated the added note about independent contractors versus volunteers um, related to returning to a full season of concerts. Um, but I also just as a general note, you know, when I saw they, they use the, um, the notes in the data arts report to their advantage, they, they gave a lot of detail. And I thought that was really helpful. Um, made for a stronger um, score in the organizational capacity area, um, particularly. Great, thank you. And that will conclude our time for Cleveland Chamber Music Society. Panelists, please submit your scores and we will turn next to Cleveland Cultural Gardens in just a moment. Our next application is from Cleveland Cultural Gardens for their project titled One World Day 2025. One World Day is a celebration of all cultures that call Northeast Ohio home. It features a naturalization ceremony for new citizens, a parade of flags, and ethnic music, dance, and food in all of the 45 plus cultural gardens. Would someone like to get us started around how this application relates to the public benefit criterion which is an organization's ability to meaningfully connect with its community through its project. 
Um, I can get us started here, this one. Um, I really enjoyed reading this application. and um, I find the public benefit very strong. I think the event combines arts and culture and food from around the world to create an experience that's pretty unique. Um, I thought the application describes many ways that the organization engages with the public and other organizations to generate excitement about that year's event. Um, interestingly, it seems to start with a look back at the prior year's event and uh, to find opportunities to improve. So I love that there's feedback being sought. I thought the event creates a place that many groups come together, each creating their own event within a larger event. Um, and they engage a small army of volunteers to pull it off. I give this a very strong score. I'll go next. In terms of public benefit, I also um, scored them in the strong range. Um, in addition to what Tom said, um, you know, it's in a public space, a public spa, uh, park. It's free to attend. Um, it supports and engages with diverse um, audiences and participants. Um, it, if, through reading, it feels like a very inclusive. Um, sacred safe space to be, to do arts and culture to its highest. Yes, I too thought this was a very strong in the public benefit area. Um, just fantastic volunteers and community partners. Only way to put together a, a one day event that attracts 50,000 people. That's really an incredible number of folks. Um, you know, they. I love that they target different communities through those specific um, press and social media um, outlets. I think that, that was all fantastic. So definitely a strong, strong application. We will move on to um, artistic and cultural vibrancy, which is an organization's ability to create a relevant and engaging project. Okay. For this one, um, they have a a wide diversity just by the nature of the gardens themselves with the 45 different cultures represented represented there. Um, they have many artists, performers from different genres as well as cultures. Um, they do survey the uh, attendees and their, the performers are paid. So I thought that this really brought a strong sense of artistic and cultural vibrancy. Um, I agree with, uh, I I also in artistic vibrancy scored them strong. I agree with Joanne. Um, all I would add is the idea of the, um, the parade of flags seems very engaging and beautiful and cohesive. Um, I myself would love to see it in person. And to add, I would, um, I also uh, rated this strong for cultural vibrancy. I love that um, even the countries uh, represented by new immigrant communities were encouraged to participate. Um, and that or the organizers attended events throughout the year in the participating communities to help build engagement around this event. So I thought that was a great way to do outreach. move on to organizational capacity and organization's ability to successfully plan for and manage its project. I'll get us started. I scored them um, in this realm uh, strong, low strong, but strong. Their timeline is explained throughout the application. It's very clear. Um, event organizers have years of experience, and as was previously um, stated, they visit um, other events to garner support and um, also, you know, wisdom on how to move forward with their project. I really like the idea of the children doing the passport to then collect the information for surveys. I thought that's a fantastic idea to be stolen. And um, definitely the audience surveys and the experience of the leadership and all of those volunteers, you just, to pull together that many volunteers, you have to be doing something with your organization that's fantastic. Um, and I really did enjoy the, um, the video. The, that was a great video of the parade. Um, I agree with my colleagues and, and just add that 
um, I found that it, it seems that what comes through through the application is that they're continuously trying to improve this event um, through all the methods that were described earlier. I uh, give it a strong for um, organizational capacity. Great. And that will conclude our time for Cleveland Cultural Gardens. Panelists, please submit your scores and we will turn next to Cleveland Rocks Past, Present, Future in just a moment. Our next application is from Cleveland Rocks Past, Present, Future for their project titled Music Saves, Waterloo Makes Music 2020, probably 2025. Um, CRPPF will present 10 free professionally produced concerts for the North Collinwood community, featuring 90 to 100 of Cleveland's best original music makers, and will present 10 music-based industry-focused workshops, as well as 10 two by fours two by four songwriter showcases featuring emerging original songwriters. Would someone like to get us started around how this application relates to the public benefit criterion, which is an organization's ability to meaningfully connect with its community through its project? I'll get us started in this realm. I have scored them strong um, in public benefit. Some notes are, you know, it's free music experiences. Some aspects are donations based. Major music census was ex executed, which um, resulted um, in curating a project that um, was based out of um, notes from the music census. Multiple types of venues are utilized, um, you know, and just in general, this is exceptional for um, a county to have um, this potential for songwriters and music makers. Um, so there. Um, I, I think the only thing I have to add to that is that I I think they, there's a real knowledge of their um, audience for this event. And this um, project seems um, specifically designed to meet this audience where they are. And I thought that was great. Um, I uh, gave this a strong and public benefit. I too give it strong and public benefit. Um, they serve underserved musicians through the workshops, um, definitely diverse audience and performers and the street fair aspect of it looks great. And I do think they have some good plans for the online engagement, um, which will broaden their public benefit. We will move on to Artistic and Cultural Vibrancy, uh, which is an organization's ability to create a relevant and engaging project. Who would like to get us started? I can do that. Um, I found the um, application um, showed us that th they had talented professionals who are engaged and paid at industry competitive rates. Um, the professionals in the industry served as mentors to selected music makers. I thought that was particularly good. Um, directly address the needs identified in the music census that was conducted and mentioned earlier. Um, I found that there was strong strategic outreach to people of color and the LGBTQ and female music artists. And I found this strong in cultural vibrancy. Um, I don't really have anything to add. I did vote it strong in cultural vibrancy. Great. Wait, all right. You, oh, oh, go yeah. ahead. No, go ahead, Melissa. Same as Joanne. <laughs> <laughs> um, we can move forward to the final criterion to discuss organizational capacity um, and organization's ability to successfully plan for and manage its project. I'll get, get us started. I rated them strong in this aspect. Um, I This is an, another example of the arts helping to revitalize the community. Um, in, income sources appear diversified. Has a person focused on the marketing aspect of um, this event? Yep. 
I uh, I rated this as strong for organizational capacity, but it would have been even stronger if I could see an effort to gain feedback um, related to the experiences of the music artists served rather than just tracking the numbers of audience members in attendance. I did also vote this as um, indicate this, this was a strong application. I thought the internship aspect of it is so important to bring people along. And um, like Melissa said, it's revitalizing an entire um, neighborhood. So I thought that was fantastic as an organization. Great. Thank you. That will conclude our time for Cleveland Rocks past, present, future. Panelists, please submit your scores and we will turn next to Friends of the McGaffin Carolyn in just a moment. Our next application is from Friends of the McGaffin Carolyn for their project titled A Community Celebration of the Restoration and Renovation of the McGaffin Carolyn. Spring 2025 will mark the completion of a 661,000 restoration and renovation of the McGaffin Carolyn after nearly 10 years of fundraising. They will be celebrating this with the return of their Friday lunchtime concerts, a rededication event, and a series of summer and fall concerts highlighting their local performers and guest performers from North American and European Towers. They will begin a student Carolyn Guild to eventually see the Carolyn play daily. Would someone like to get us started around how this application relates to the public benefit criterion, which is an organization's ability to meaningfully connect with its community through its project? I thought this agency had strong public benefit, outdoor, free, you're within earshot of that area, you are going to hear that beautiful music. Um, I really did like the pre-concert talks and the tours. That would be really important as they have done all this restoration. Um, and and the, also the student guild, I believe, makes it strong. Um, so that's what I um, I rated the public benefit as fair. I thought the um, the audience for this work was particularly difficult to define. Um, the, the friends in this application define the community by listing the staff, students, and visitors to all the organizations around the university circle community. But I, I couldn't get a sense of who like their specific audience was. Um, identifying people that they're specifically to hear the concerts, may, maybe that's impossible to do, but um, I, I didn't I didn't get that through the application. They described the challenges of meeting their audiences, but I was pleased to read about pre-concert talks and post-concert meet the artist receptions and tours of the bell tower. Um, though I didn't learn about how successful these efforts were um, in reading the application. I also thought the creation of the Student Guild is an excellent development and shows an effort to do additional outreach. Um, I echo um, what Joanne and Tom has conveyed. I rated them on the low end of strong. Um, I also agree that knowing more about audience and drawing in audience would have been um, really great to read about. I did note, um, you know, being free and free parking is helpful in diversified um, artist art activities uh, surrounding the renovation. Next, we will move on to artistic and cultural vibrancy funding criterion, which is an organization's ability to create a relevant and engaging project. Now I thought this in this area, I, I um, fair was where I landed. Um, I wasn't sure if there's going to be new audiences for this music in the world. <laughs> um, I, I, but it did seem like they made a great effort to meet 
um, find new donors. Um, and I do think that they are going to be able to connect to the new audiences through those conversations. I also rated this as fair for uh, cultural vibrancy. Um, the, the efforts uh, described to engage the public, I thought were aspirational. Um, they, they mentioned how they're learning more about their donors and audiences and their interests, but the application doesn't tell us precisely what they're learning. Um, so it would have been much stronger, I think, if, if you know, the result of the learning was um, transmitted to us through the application. Um, I rated them on kind of a low, strong side of things. Um, I agree with what Joanne and Tom have said. I did add that they do have um, various genre of music to appeal to a wider audience. Um, it feels like they could, they'll pull in audience members that they don't even intend to have pulled in through passerbys and things. So that's be curious who they catch in the process. Great, we will move forward to organizational capacity and organization's ability to successfully plan for and manage its project. Um, I found the um, organizational capacity as fair. Um, they listed their goals, um, but not how the success of these goals will be measured. Um, I found that just overall, there was a very passive approach to measuring progress and impact. And I think um, the application would be much stronger if we could see the um, the details about measuring progress and and impact of their program. I um, rated them on a high end of strong uh, fair in terms of organizational capacity. In two respects, they communicated a need for more volunteers. Um, but I will note that they had just had a significant renovation of um, very high fiscal um, reachings and they were six, they are being successful in that respect. So I have hope that they will be successful in their next phase of programming and engagement. Now I gave this agency strong in the organizational capacity because their ability to raise all of those funds means there's somebody driving this and doing some really strong arm twisting, shall we call it? <laughs> but really strong work to get those um, bells restored um, in order to get them back to where they used to be. So that, that was my score. Great. Panelists, please submit your scores uh, for Friends of the McGaffin, Carolyn, and we'll turn next to In Harmony Therapeutic Services in just a moment. Our next application is from In Harmony Therapeutic Services for their project titled Healing Through Harmony, a music therapy program for substance use recovery in Cuyahoga County. This proposed project seeks to continue the collaboration between In Harmony Therapeutic Services and Rivian Mental Health and Recovery using music therapy as a supplemental treatment for individuals in Cuyahoga County who are recovering from incorporating evidence-based practices. It tailors musical interventions to individual needs and aims to enhance mood, self-esteem, group cohesion, coping skills, and self-expression. Would someone like to get us started about how this application relates to the public benefit criterion, which is an organization's ability to meaningfully connect with its community through its project? I'll start with this one. So for the public benefit, I take the big picture of what art can do in the healing community, particularly in the area of substance um, use disorder. 
So I think it's strong in that category um, in terms of what it can return and who it can return to our community. Um, not quite sure, you know, it's, since it's within another agency and, and doesn't seem to be able to offer that outside of that agency, um, not so sure how that works. So I voted this one low strong. And, and to add to that, I, I um, appreciate, I really appreciate what this project is trying to accomplish and I'm impressed by the work that, um, that In Harmony um, engages in. However, I thought there was only fair evidence of the public benefit of this program. Um, I thought while the um, community benefiting from the project was described as individuals navigating recovery of substance abuse disorder in Cuyahoga County, only those enrolled in Rivian's recovery program are benefiting um, from that. So suggesting that anyone in the public can access this program by enrolling in services at Rivian was a little bit of a stretch of, of evidence of, of broad public benefit. It, it didn't reflect the um, public benefit when one might not even know about the program at, in, within Rivian unless they were a client there. So, um, so I thought this could have been stronger if there was some connection to the larger community. I also um, scored them on a, the fair category for similar reasons as to, um, Tom just conveyed. I try to tease out the relationship between the two entities and the greater public benefit. Um, and if Rivian's a for-profit, um, and how that all works. Um, but I do echo what Joanne says. Um, this is a great benefit for those suffering with substance use disorders. Um, so it's a hard um, place to be not knowing the relationship of true public benefit. We will move forward to artistic and cultural vibrancy funding criterion, which is an organization's ability to create a relevant and engaging project. Who'd like to get started? I can do that if you like. Um, I, um, I appreciated seeing the music therapy session, uh, uh, like the session plan, as well as the pre and post surveys that were included with the application. Um, but the, uh, the description of the typical session, I thought was evidence of fair cultural vibrancy. It, it, it could have gone further. You know, there could have been an additional explanation of what those sessions were like um, outside of just submitting the, the formal um, session plan. Well, just because of the nature of only, you know, being able to target these young people, uh, well, people, not young people, people who were getting these services inside of another agency services, um, it's hard to know um, whether it's artistically vibrant. Um, yes, self-reflection and creating music and journaling, I can understand all how that definitely um, works in the healing process. I get that part, but I don't know what it's it lends to broader artistic and cultural vibrancy. So I get this there. I um, rated them on the um, high side of fair. I echo. Um, it is a, an example of using the arts to help um, tackle, invest in societal challenges and issues. Um, it would have been nice to have more examples of um, what that would look like and uh, feedback from participants, though that might have violated HIPAA if they did. I don't know. <laughs> okay. We can move forward to organizational capacity and organization's ability to successfully plan for and manage its project. I appreciated the therapeutic rubric as the me measurements of success. 
I thought that was, you know, very clear what that would be. Um, but I'm, I wasn't clear on whether it was a strong leader and I don't know who the other people are who are working there and how it fits with inside of that other agency and how any of that, what that relationship might be like. I wasn't clear on that, those things. And I was also thinking that um, I don't I, I don't know if this is where this goes, but, but I thought that maybe some behavioral health funding might be a better place for this agent if that lands in this location. Um, I scored them in the fair category. Um, I try to read their letter of reference or support, but the data sheet came up instead. I um, would have loved to have read that. I think that would have helped clarify some things, particularly, um, you know, relationship with the organization, with Rivian and things of that nature. Um, so, yes, thank you. Yeah, I had the same problem with that data art, that um, that letter of reference coming up. Um, but and I also noticed um, I noted that there's evidence of of qualified music therapists good planning, um, a good partnership with Rivian. Um, but I, I would give the uh, organizational capacity as a, as a high fare. Thank you. That will conclude our time for In Harmony Therapeutic Services. Panelists, please submit your scores and we'll turn next to Jones Road Family Development Corporation in just a moment. And just to note for panelists, I'm planning to take a break after Jones Road, if that's okay with everybody. Me through. Okay, great. And also just to clarify, yeah, if your scores are not changing, you can just click mark as complete. And if you've already done that, you're all good. Our next application is from Jones Road Family Development Corporation for their project titled Literacy Through the Arts Summer Academy. A six-week summer arts academy where children learn instrumental music, vocal music, poetry, theater, visual arts, dance, band, and orchestra. At the end of the six weeks, the children give a free concert to the public to showcase what they learned during the academy. Would someone like to get us started around how this application relates to the public benefit criterion, which is an organization's ability to meaningfully connect with its community through its project? I'll get us started. I rated them in as strong. Um, some notes that I have are supporting a neighborhood that experiences tremendous economic challenges. I wonder what the breakdown of the 350 number is, how many kids participate, um, and I appreciate that they pay high school interns. Um, I uh, noted that the application does a fair job of clearly defining the communities served by this program. On one hand, I read that the Slavic village area is quite diverse. I assume the applicant meant racially diverse but the most of the children and teens involved in the program are black. So I, I that didn't square up for me. Um, there's no explanation provided why this was so. Um, I, it was also confusing to read that every child, teen and adult belong to our community and are important, but I didn't understand why that was um, particularly relevant. Um, so I um, scored this as fair. I scored it as strong, um, just as, as a summer program in a community where the children would not have much else to do or probably don't have very many options for a free program. And they get to stay there all day and that, you know, they're safe and, and not getting too crazy and they have positive leadership. Um, so I think that no cost to them. And I really did um, like the variety of the arts that they are offered. Um, things they can take with them. I mean, they can use that band instruction to get a college scholarship, let's see. So I thought that was strong. Great. Next, we'll move on to the Artistic and Cultural Vibrancy Funding Criterion, which is an organization's ability to create a relevant and engaging project.
I can go here. Um, I, th I thought the application could have been stronger if we could view excerpts from the final concert showing the transformative power of the arts. Um, I rated the application fair um, and vibrancy. I couldn't find a clear description about what is specifically taught throughout the camp day and the method used for teaching the students. Um, it would have been a stronger application if, if I could understand how the teens would be incorporated into the camp day and how the curriculum specifically related to this community and how it improves literacy. I rated them in the strong category. I agree with Tom. It would have been um, nice to have more clarifications on, you know, what it specifically looked like, um, but they do convey, they, they pay competitive, competitively professional teachers and they pay their high school interns um, and things of that nature, but just more details on like what it looks like um, would have been helpful for clarification. Um, I did vote this one strong in the artistic vibrancy area um, just because just teaching children art. <laughs> I just always think that's a strong thing. And, you know, again, it was free to the children. They get art instruction for free. Um, and the professional teachers are paid. And the high school students and college students are also paid. You can move on to the final criterion. Um, which is organizational capacity and organization's ability to successfully plan for and manage its project. They seem to have a um, training program for the yeah, for the people who are teaching in the or in the camp. Um, I believe that they are working with the young people that offer social emotional learning. So I thought that was you know, good thing that they are even thinking in that way. Um, they do use surveys and they do have a bit of a timeline, a loose timeline in their um, description. Um, it does appear that the leadership of this organization is strong. Um, the, for the budgeting, it looks like they have strong board giving and strong individual and corporate um, funding for an agency that's the, their size. I rated them in the strong category, lower end of the strong category, on top of what Joanne said. I'd be curious um, how they, they optimize the surveys and feedback. It would have been interesting. They didn't have any attach. Well, they did have attachments, but they didn't have attachments for like examples of surveys and, you know, um, aggregating what that meant for moving forward. Um, and I um, rated organizational capacity as fair. Um, I was particularly stuck on in the in the data arts report. There was um, a deep reduction in funding from the city, um, and no explanation about what that was about. So that left me just questioning um, some of that data. Um, so I rated this as fair for organizational capacity. Great. That concludes our time for Jones Road Family Development Corporation. Panelists, please submit your scores. Uh, we will take a five minute break. And when we return, we will uh, be starting off with Lakewood Young Filmmakers Academy. So if you want to pull that up and be ready, um, I think we will switch the screen to a, a timer so that we're all on the same, same time frame. Let's see. Great, and we'll take a five minute break. I'll see you guys back soon.
fastest five minutes of my life. But good to see you guys again. <laughs> okay. I'll give you a moment to reorient yourself, but we are starting with Lakewood Young Filmmakers Academy. Okay, our next application is from Lakewood Young Filmmakers Academy for their project titled, No Filmmaker Left Behind, Free Summer Advanced Film Camp for Teens. Young Filmmakers Academy Advanced Summer Film Camp is a three week workshop where students ages 12 to 17 produce a film through all three phases of pre-production, production and post-production, production, all under the guidance of their experienced award-winning mentors. The finished film debuts at an open to the public event, the Red Carpet Gala. Would someone like to get us started around how this application relates to the public benefit criterion, which is an organization's ability to meaningfully connect with its community through its project? I'll get us started. I rated their public benefit in the strong category. Notes that I have include it's free three weeks is a significant amount of time, um, which is great. Fosters a sense of belonging. A unique skill set is taught. Um, and then the gala tickets I noted were reasonably priced. I also noted that it was a free event and free to the students and have engaging high schoolers in the summertime for three weeks is um, a very big public benefit in my mind. Um, it is building a future workforce and um, offering um, a unique set of skills for young people who would not otherwise um, be engaged in this particular industry. Um, they uh, are now an arts partner for the um, public school system. I thought that was a good, a good public benefit for the agency. Um, um, I um, also rated this as strong in public benefit um, and agree with my colleagues. I just to add um, that I also appreciated the grassroots approach to marketing the program while also partnering with the with the CMSD to increase awareness among students. Um, so I, I thought this was strong public benefit. Great. We will move to Artistic and Cultural Vibrancy, which is an organization's ability to create a relevant and engaging project. I um, appreciated the commitment to belonging design principles and think the application would have been stronger if the application included what those principles actually were. I was interested to read about that. Um, they, uh, they say they will also survey the participating students. Um, and I rated this project as strong for vibrancy. I'll go next. I rated them strong in this category. I noted as well as Tom, the sense of belonging, creating a sense of um, our space and breath in the world. I would have liked to have known more about, you know, the background of that. I do have an idea what they're talking about, though. I did like how they provided um, appreciation for the level of work that goes into this genre of the arts. Um, so that the kids have a realistic understanding. Uh, yeah. I thought that um, the, the, the way that they're building this community of young people who will be hopefully the next um, group of people in the industry is, in, is an important um, addition to our overall cultural vibrancy. And I also feel like um, just the art that they're making, the kids are making art. And that's all, always been a, a, a you know wonderful way to build up the cultural vibrancy. The final criterion to discuss is organizational capacity, an organization's ability to successfully plan for and manage its project. Um, 
I'll go here. The, um, they have a diverse population base. Um, they do seem to have very experienced leadership across the board in that film, the way you make film pre-production, all of that. It seems like a very strong group of people. Um, they do use student evaluations. Um, and those are my things. Um, to add, I would say um, I noted the excellent leadership of Eric and Hortensia Swinderman. Um, I love the emphasis on belonging, all identities and abilities. I love the no filmmaker left behind idea. I thought that was great. Um, and I uh, rated the organizational capacity as strong. I um, rated them as strong as well. Um, I liked the idea, no one is an island as well. Um, one, one of the team members is a li liaison to the Hispanic community, um, helping with outreach and diversity and inclusion. Um, it sounded like there was some personnel composition changes. Um, and hopefully now they're more in line um, with how to move forward well with the staff members they have, but I rated them strong. And that will conclude our time for Lakewood Young Filmmakers Academy. Panelists, please submit your scores and we'll turn next to Maelstrom Collaborative Arts in just a moment. Our next application is for Maelstrom Collaborative Arts for their project titled Remixed Media Series. Maelstrom Collaborative Arts is seeking support for their 2025 Remixed Media Series, monthly performances that showcase collaborations between diverse artists from different disciplines and backgrounds. Would someone like to get us started around how this application relates to the public benefit criterion which is an organization's ability to meaningfully connect with its community through its project. I can start us off there. Um, I thought the application described that the organization has experience bringing together a diverse and inclusive group of artists, but I was unsure about who the community is that's served by this project. Um, I think it's the artists, but then I'm unsure about how audience engagement is valued. Um, the performances are marketed through Maelstrom's own channels in addition to utilizing the artist's own networks. I thought that was good. Um, and I rated the public benefit as fair. I rated the public benefit as strong. It feels like they have um, knowledge of the community that they're serving, which does appear to be the artist. Um, they do work with different artists. Of course, that brings different outlooks and different communities each time they um, engage with those artists. And then those artists are working together to create something that the public may have never seen before. Um, and I do think that their marketing strategy of word of mouth is, is pretty strong. I rated them as strong. In addition to what everybody else has said, I appreciated um, the um, capacity for the artist to come in and try something new and explore and grow and develop and find their own um, levels of interest in the different arts. Next, we'll move into artistic and cultural vibrancy funding criterion, which is an organization's ability to create a relevant and engaging project, which I know there might have been some crossover between public and, and, and artistic, but feel free to share. Yeah, I can get us started. Um, I've rated them as strong. The three notes I have are artists are paid above average stipends, individualized support um, with additional resources to help the artists move forward. I did rate them as strong as well. I thought it was good that they have orientations. They do pay the artists. They offer low cost 
um, space. They do seem to have some kind of interactive communication um, with their with their audience. Um, I like the way they encourage the artists um, to work together, and then they are, you know, again going out into the world and building this beautiful Cleveland arts community. Um, I noted that the application describes um, supporting artists with stipends, as we heard about earlier, but also with robust um, production and marketing support, which I thought was excellent. Um, they're accessible to all audiences through a standing pay what you can policy and free live streams um, and an emphasis that um, that Maelstrom is a place where all are welcome, but I didn't learn, I wanted to learn more about the audiences that are showing up and coming to, to these events. Um, I appreciated the description of the follow-up with artists and how that informs future productions. Um, I was unclear though about how uh, Maelstrom continued to support the growth of the artists um, that, they, um, that they worked with through this program. Um, though it was stated as a goal, I, I didn't get a clear sense of what they continued to do with the artists after this project would be completed. Um, so I rated the cultural vibrancy as fair. Great. The final criterion to discuss is organizational capacity and organization's ability to successfully plan for and manage its project. I am um, scored fair in this category. Um, I'm not really sure about the leadership of the organization. Um, I was, they weren't clear in stating how strong they were, um, that they are. Um, and I'm not really sure about um, the goals of the organization overall. So that's just fair. I um, scored them in the high fair. Um, what I'll add on top of Joanne's is um, they're meeting an untapped need. They do have measures of success that are quantitative, but also qualitative. And then I noted that um, the match, one of part of the match is board donation. So fiscal support does indicate, um, you know, the support of the board and things of that nature. Um, I noted that the artistic team managing the project um, were very experienced in many aspects of performance and design. And I thought that was one of the ways that they plan to support these um, productions. Um, I was, uh, I also noted that, um, that I would, would have liked to have seen more specific detail about the project timeline and that would have made it a stronger application. And um, in the data arts report, I noted that attendance in 2023 was significantly lower than in 2022, but there was no description about what happened and why that, that was so. So it's just left with a uh, question there. Um, so I rated organizational capacity as fair. Thank you. That will conclude our time for Maelstrom Collaborative Arts. Panelists, please submit your scores and we'll next turn to Pals for Healing in just a moment. Our next application is, for, is from Pals for Healing for their project titled Healing Power of Art Therapy. Pals for Healing, Paper Art Therapy, Letting Go, Self-Actualization, will use art therapy to bring healing to those who are at risk, experience trauma and or loss, and bring awareness of harnessing and using the healing power of art. Would someone like to get us started around how this application relates to the public benefit criterion, which is an organization's ability to meaningfully connect with its community through its project. I can get us started. Um, 
I rated them in the strong category, high strong, um, utilizing arts for a societal issue challenge um, is, you know, in a variety of settings, um, free, free based and also fee based, um, depending on the setting. Um, their demographic breakdown is fairly diverse um, and they're serving, you know, 52% Black, 25% Asian, 32% White, um, and the queer community as well in a significant manner. I too gave them strong in this category, public benefit category. I love that they use um, community sites. I think that's a great public benefit. Um, the fact that it is some fee-based and some free that gives access to more people. Um, they are reaching a diverse population. Um, and um, the one question I had was, how do people find out? I wasn't quite sure where, where the marketing was coming in. And I found um, that the community, that the way they described the community serve was very broad. They say it's um, all who have suffered trauma and or grief in Cuyahoga County. Um, the, the application also mentions those at risk as defined by the ACES scale, but we weren't told what the ACES scale is. Um, how the organization attempts to reach this community was unclear to me also, um, except through schools and organizations who have used their services in the past. So it seems like a lot of repeat business um, but I don't know how they got that business in the first place or how they're finding uh, new participants. So I rated this as fair and public benefit. Okay. Next, we'll move on to artistic and cultural vibrancy funding criterion, which is an organization's ability to create a relevant and engaging project. I'll start here. Um, it was never clear to me reading this application, how art is used in these therapeutic contacts with the clients. Um, the healing power of art is mentioned throughout the application. I think we all get that um, viscerally, but I don't know what's actually happening um, during this these contacts. Um, there were surveys conducted. It appears that artists are paid fairly. Um, I rated cultural vibrancy as fair. I rated them in the strong category. Um, I do agree um, to give more explanation of the role of the arts in um, supporting grief and trauma and growth and healing in that, um, and talking about more um, how the process is um, higher than maybe the end project. But I will note, I appreciated that the supplies that they provide to their participants are of high quality. I, as an artist, know the importance of that. And it gives them a sense of pride and accomplishment to be able to work with high quality um, supplies. I, re I wrote it. I rated them as fair in this um, arts and cultural vibrancy category. Uh, they do pay their therapists. Um, they do use referrals. Um, I like that they use the audience response to pivot if need be. Um, but, you know, for it not to be about the art, to be about the therapy, then, you know, this is the artist and cultural vibrancy section. So I was questioning that. Um, we will move forward to the final criterion to discuss organizational capacity um, and organization's ability to successfully plan for and manage its project. I rated them as strong. I noted that 90% of the staff are registered art therapists, which is really impressive. Um, they're there's not a lot of art therapists out there. Um, and they do have a plan to cover shortfalls of funding. Again, this agency also uses the therapeutic metrics for success. Um, so, I mean, it's clear what, what they're going for and that might be a good thing. 
for, the, for this agency, but I did mark them as fair in this category. Um, I noted out there in the data arts report shows that in 2023, four staff members were lost with no other explanation about what happened. Um, I see there was an increase in volunteers, maybe to cover um, those staff members that were missing, but um, the but I question the organizational capacity as a result of sort of my big questions there. Um, for this project, the project leader is highly qualified, but I couldn't get a sense about how many others that they work with. Um, so overall, I gave the organizational capacity as fair. Okay, that will conclude our time for Pals for Healing. Panelists, please submit your scores and we'll turn next to the Brexville Theater in just a moment. Our next application is from the Brexville Theater for their project titled The Brexville Theater's Traveling Education Series. This spring, the Brexville Theater is hitting the road, bringing literature-based entertainment to schools, libraries, care facilities, and various locations across Cuyahoga County. Their mission is to deliver engaging live theater experiences directly to elementary-aged children, making the magic of performance accessible in any space. Would someone like to get us started around how this application relates to the public benefit criterion, which is an organization's ability to meaningfully connect with its community through its project? I'll go first. Um, this is a traveling theater company that goes into schools, so I think that that's a great benefit to the community, um, and you know, hopefully, all the schools can can receive this group. Um, I think that is in introducing the young people in their classrooms where they're comfortable to theater, to literature, to art. And so those are good things. I think they listen to the public and they bring the programs to back to the schools after they hear what they have to say. So I, I thought this was strong in the public benefit. I also um, scored them strong in the public benefit. I, you know, one note I, you know, it's free to audience, but it's also, it's a small fee to libraries and schools. And I was curious if schools and libraries had enough time to know, to line item, things of this nature in their budget specifically. Um, likely so that they have discretionary funds. Um, I noted that I hope they get to go back to Laura's home. It was an organization that was great. Um, and they're really prioritizing inclusive representation. Um, I noted that they um, described the audience for the education series as the group of youth and adults they serve through this program. Um, but it doesn't really describe the, who those people are that well to, for me. Um, it discusses why it's important to be informed by the community's culture, um, but it only does a fair job of indicating what that culture is. Um, the application discusses working with the organizations where the performances will take place to ensure that the shows resonate with local values and interests, but it doesn't tell us what happens with that information. Like, I wondered if each venue selects the show that's performed at their venue as a result of these discussions, or if there's one show that's touring through all the schools and it, you know, it, where, where that intersects with um, where, what the school is, is focusing on. Um, I, I wasn't sure about the, the difference there. I suspect that it's one show that's touring around, but I, I didn't know from the application. Um, I appreciated the casting and hiring um, prioritizes inclusivity and diversity, and I rated this as fair and public benefit. Great. We will move next to artistic and cultural vibrancy, which is an organization's ability to create a relevant and engaging project.
I um, rated them high fare. Um, I noted that there are themes of resilience and friendship. I would be curious to know more details specifically about what that means, um, how that is um, conveyed through their performance. I rated them high fare also in this artistic vibrancy section. Um, they do pay their artists. The artists do appear to be from diverse backgrounds. They are using um, some kind of, a, you know, audience surveys, but um, they don't really say how they choose their artists. And, and then, like, is there any criteria for the artists themselves to then be a part of the um, touring group? I noted that the application says that the project is rooted in trauma-informed practices. They emphasize equity, inclusion, cultural competency, and, and restorative practices. Um, but besides prioritizing diversity in hiring and casting, I was unclear how the rest of that description was implemented in the project. Um, I noted that competitive stipends were offered to actors I wondered about the production crew or whether that extended to them as well. Um, I appreciated that there are post-show Q and A's, but I wasn't clear how these were utilized. So I rated this fair and cultural competency. Okay, we will move forward to organizational capacity. Um, an organization's ability to successfully plan for and manage its project. I can start here. I, I um, noted that the team assembled for this project seems strong and is well suited to accomplish the project. The company's executive board is mentioned in this section for the first time. I get the sense that they are a very hands-on board accomplishing many administrative tasks for the uh, company as volunteers, and I rated the organizational capacity as strong. I rated them high fare. Um, they do have a staff that's highly credentialed in the arts, and also what I noted is um, also in social work and trauma-informed um, practices. I appreciated the feedback um, methods beyond just audience and participants, but also the actors and, you know, the those involved in creating the production. Um, so high fare. I did give them a strong because they did include a timeline. They do have a strong, diverse board. Um, they do have well-qualified leadership. Um, and then they do um, use several key metrics for their success. Thank you. That will conclude our time for the Brexville Theater. Panelists, please submit your scores and we'll turn next to the City Club of Cleveland in just a moment. Our next application is from the City Club of Cleveland for their project titled Authors in Conversation series. City Club of Cleveland believes the stories nonfiction authors tell can help bring diverse voices into our community conversations and strengthen our understanding of our world and its future. This series invites these voices from history, creative nonfiction, journalism, academia, and science to the podium. They feature a minimum of 10 local and national writers throughout the year whose work helps us see anew the issues and challenges shaping our communities to participate in a dialogue with audiences. Would someone like to get us started around how this application relates to the public benefit criterion, which is an organization's ability to meaningfully connect with its community through its project? I'll get us started. I rated them a, a very strong um, in this category. Um, I was curious about though, um, Though most of the forms are ticketed 
That's fine. Students are free, which is great. I was curious if that was K-12 or college, like how did it, they define students? Um, local booksellers can benefit from this, um, you know, experiences project. Op opens up public dialogue, partners with 70 plus nonprofit organizations. Um, they said, you know, they made um, early strides in programming by banning all white male forums. And that was, a, you know, I appreciated hearing their um, emphasis on inclusivity and diversity, setting new standards for representation, significant volunteer support. I rated this as uh, as very strong. I thought there's a long history of community engagement um, that was demonstrated throughout the application, um, and that the um, the partners that they talked about um, helped design the speaker forums and align them with the pressing needs of the community, which I thought was great. Um, I also noted that uh, there they made these events accessible through live streaming and archiving. I love when they said they aim to be radically inclusive, to celebrate diversity, create a sense of belonging, bridge political divides, honor dissent, and create a shared vision of what is possible. That really resonated with me and, and just um, gave me a pretty clear sense of um, how this um, is of strong public benefit. Um, many of the things that my colleagues say, I always, I also have to say the same thing, but I also like that they use skilled moderators, which brings in different voices. Um, and I really do like the streaming um, aspect of it. I think that's fantastic. Great, we can move forward to artistic and cultural vibrancy, um, which is an organization's ability to create a relevant and engaging project. The, um, for me, the artistic and cultural vibrancy is um, strong. It is shown through the um, variety of authors that they receive or they engage every year, again, through the skilled moderators, um, as well as they are encouraging civil dialogue, and they also encourage ongoing um, conversations. They don't pay the authors directly, but they do pay for their travel, their lodging, lodging and they offer um, an opportunity for the book sales. So those are the things that I think make it, um, give it some strong cultural vibrancy. And adding to that, I would say, um, I read in the application that the organization appears committed to having a staff and board of diverse backgrounds. I thought the very idea of these forums is its relevance and engagement with the audience is the point of them. So um, this got a very high score for me and as strong in cultural vibrancy. I don't have anything to add above what they've said. I gave them a strong score for hey. vibrancy. Thanks, Melissa. Um, we can move forward to the final criterion, which is organizational capacity and organization's ability to successfully plan for and manage its project. Um, you're off mute. Were you going to? Oh, I'll, I'll start. Yeah. I, <laughs> oh, it didn't intend to be, but um, the, I just noted that they have a long history of de of delivering um, a highly engaging program. Engagement and inclusiveness are values seen throughout the application. I rated the organizational capacity as strong. Same here. I looked through their website and the history of the organization um, and the authors that they're bringing year after year, um, strong in organizational capacity. I too voted them strong in the organizational capacity. I will add that they they do use committees um, to to build on who these who the people will be. I think that just engages the community, and that's wonderful. Great. 
That concludes our time for the City Club of Cleveland. Panelists, please submit your scores and we'll turn next to Blue Water Chamber Orchestra in just a moment. Our next application is from Blue Water Chamber Orchestra for their project titled Blue Water Chamber Orchestra Explores the Relationship of Music and Dance. Blue Water Chamber Orchestra collaborates with Ohio Contemporary Ballet in a unique event where orchestra and dancers not only perform together, but the symbiotic relationship between music and the dance is explained by the artistic directors of the organizations. Their audience will be given insight into how the choreography is chosen for the music and vice versa, as well as be treated to the high artistry of both these well-respected Cleveland-based institutions. Would someone like to get us started around how this application relates to the public benefit criterion, which is an organization's ability to meaningfully connect with its community through its project? Um, I'll get us started. I rated them in the strong, mid-strong category. I noted that they're in a location that is accessible to community members that might not traditionally have access to cl the classical arts, and that um, might spark, um, you know, excitement and curiosity for folks who maybe haven't had that in the past. Seniors and students are invited, and they... Um, Dress rehearsal is free to them as well. Um, so I rated them strong. I really like the, um, or think the dialogue between the audience and the performers is a strong benefit to the community, as well as the um, partnership between agencies. And it does appear that they are going to local schools um, and that they use social media and I think that the performances at the libraries all open up access for the, for the community, for the public. I agree with my colleagues and I and, uh, would just add that um, the application could have been stronger um, if I had a better sense of the community that the project was intended to serve or how that community informs um, the creation of the project. I wasn't clear about that, but overall, um, I like the choice of the Lakewood Auditorium um, for its accessibility um, and uh, everything else my colleagues just said. Uh, so I, I rated this as a strong public benefit. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to artistic and cultural vibrancy funding criterion which is an organization's ability to create a relevant and engaging project. I'll go first here. Um, the, um, for me, the artistic vibrancy is shown through, of course, the paid audiences and the opportunity for audience feedback and for the diverse um, artists that are performing, but they also have mentorship available and that's very important to grow um, the artists themselves. I've rated them strong and I noted um, similar to Joanne um, musicians and dancers fairly compensated I appreciate how this project breaks down the walls of classical orchestra and ballet um, and I um, also rated this as strong in this category and um, I thought plans to survey the audience members um, was good and that um, there are experienced artistic and administrative leaders who've worked with a variety of audiences as a plus. Um, I noted that the application described that artists being paid fairly, but the budget only showed fees for artistic leadership. I was a little confused by that. Um, dancers and musicians are described as being diverse Actually, they described them as being very diverse. I didn't know what the difference between diverse and very diverse was, but um, I still appreciate that there's a 
a diverse uh, group of artists. We can move forward to organizational capacity and organization's ability to successfully plan for and manage its project. I can it start here. Appear, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Joanne. It does appear that there is very strong leadership, very qualified leadership to run this organization um, in both organizations. And, um, and so I just thought that this had strong capacity. Um, they did mention that they use surveys. Um, you could see in their other funding sources in their budget that they do have other funding sources. Um, they didn't mention a timeline, but it does appear that um, there is a there is um, set dates for each performance. So I did I did give them a strong. I went. Strong as well. Um, you know, I noted a diversified match um, just in case. Um, excellent leadership in two strong organizations. Um, and I also rated this as strong in organizational capacity. I, I particularly appreciated the spirit of their pay what you wish, all are welcome, no one is turned away policy. Um, it's a little bit um, more welcoming than just uh, pay what you can um, idea. Um, and I, I think that uh, there was evidence that um, there are organizations who have experience collaborating and collaborating together. Um, and uh, I really appreciated that. Great. That will conclude our time for Blue Water Chamber Orchestra. Panelists, please submit your scores and we'll turn next to Cleveland Ballet in just a moment. Our next application is from Cleveland Ballet for their project titled Cleveland Ballet's Pay What You Can production of Romeo and Juliet at Playhouse Square. Cleveland Ballet will present a pay what you can performance for Romeo and Juliet at Playhouse Square in downtown Cleveland. This public performance for approximately a thousand attendees is tailored to engage audiences of all ages, backgrounds, and ethnicities. Would someone like to get us started around how this application relates to the public benefit criterion, which is an organization's ability to meaningfully connect with its community through its project? Um, I'll get us started with public benefit. Um, while I appreciated the idea of making performances accessible with a pay what you can program, um, I thought the public benefit of a program like this is weakened by some of the language that was used to describe the program in the, the, the particularly the pay what you can aspect in the application and in the marketing. Um, pay what you can is, is how it's marketed, suggested, 10 to $30 tickets. Um, I was really confused by that um, contradiction in a way. Um, they say they will not turn anyone away and arrangements to attend can be made through the box office. So it seemed to create an extra step for an audience member whose definition of what pay what you can is less than $10. Um, while attempting to be inclusive, I thought that this extra step can have the opposite effect and could potentially alienate an audience member who didn't want to take the extra step of making arrangements, whatever that meant. Um, the application's weak in how it described the potential audiences for the performance. It's unclear to me how the cultural diversity of its dancers will build connections with the community. Um, so I rated this as um, weak in public benefit. Um. I rated them fair and public benefit. I also emphasize that um, taking that next step to have to um, go to a box office to talk about economic challenges of attending and things um, creates a probably a response that people don't do that. Um, and then they don't attend and get exposure to the arts. Um, I did note that they have um, study guides for um, K-12. So that's a nice way to 
um, engage public students and support them with academic standards. Um, and also noted they said 45 audience members in a thousand in one place. I think they just wrote it wrong. Um, so yes. I um, also rated them fair in the public benefit um, arena. I did not, I, I did think that the ticket price could be a barrier to some audience members. Um, but I also thought that the um, dress rehearsal, it seemed like the free dance instruction and then there was rehearsals for them to attend. Um, there is a diverse company um, company there to, to that are on the stage, so lots of people can see themselves there. So just low strong. We'll move on to artistic and cultural vibrancy funding criterion, which is an organization's ability to create a relevant and engaging project. Well, I gave them a low, strong and artistic vibrancy um, just because, um, you know, I think it would be harder, hard for some people to get there and see what they're doing. But the universal love story of Romeo and Juliet, um, you know, it's us against the world. And I do think that's very relevant for um, school audiences to see there's so many variations of us against them that they may see themselves in that story and um and and you know really enjoy the the ballet itself um of course they pay their artists their artists are professionals um the artists do receive training and um, and it does seem like there's other funders that um, are supporting um this uh, particular program Um, I rated them in the you know, low strong, um, you know, as Joanne said, artists are being paid. Um, it does, um, the story of Romeo and Ju Juliet theoretically do connect with um, current world um, issues and challenges and things. I was curious how they helped audience members on a concrete level connect it all, um, especially with young people. Um, who might not immediately see the the parallels. Um, so that's, yeah. Yeah, I agree with um, a lot of the comments um, that were just made. Um, I had a question about how the outreach efforts um, were in inclusive of the study guides. I, I didn't know if like, if I attended this performance, do I receive a study guide? or if they were reserved for um, uh, students who are attending the performance or you know a specific audience. So I wasn't sure about that. Um, I rated the application as fair for um, cultural vibrancy. The final criterion to discuss is organizational capacity and organization's ability to successfully plan for and manage its project. Um, I will say uh, that the project budget was confusing. Um, it appeared to include expenses and income related to the entire production of Romeo and Juliet rather than those related to this particular project, um, the pay what you can performance. The application was unclear about how it will gather audience feedback with regards to engagement and the nurturing of audiences. It mentions the project's impact on the local dance community without any description of um, how that community would be engaged. So I rated the organizational capacity as fair. Um, above, I rated them high fair and on top of what Tom said, I um, noted in FY22 through FY23, there was a significant decrease in the number of full-time staff. Curious as to why that significant shift and if it has affected their capacity. I too um, scored this in a high fair um, 
I do think that the agency has a wealth of experience. I, I applaud them for reinventing themselves three times um, and coming back from whatever happened a few years ago. So it seems like they are on the right trajectory to continue to be successful. Um, they do seem to use um, measured uh, uh, audience measurements. And so I, I do also I did enjoy watching their supportive material. That will conclude our time for Cleveland Ballet. Panelists, please submit your scores and we'll turn next to Renovere Music in just a moment. Our next application is from Renovere Music for their project titled, A Hive Song, The Frequency of Sisterhood. Renovere Music will engage My Sister's Keeper, a group of Black female urban beekeepers in highly collaborative documentary songwriting workshops to express themselves through creative songs and empower voices that often go unheard. With participant approval, Renovere will share the culminating songs at thoughtfully curated public performances in Greater Cleveland to build empathy and understanding across the broader community. Would someone like to get us started around how this application relates to the public by benefit criterion, which is an organization's ability to meaningfully connect with its community through its project? Um, I'll get us started. I, uh, I rated them strong. I have thought about this application since reading it like obsessively in a good way. I couldn't talk to anyone about it. So my cat knows all about this project. I just feel like it honors really sacred members of um, their community with the diverse experiences and, and, you know, weaving in the arts to tell a story that then the, the public can hear in multiple performances. It just it vibrates through me, the, the impact of this project. I too um, absolutely thought that the work that they're doing is is so important to the public. I'm um, just bringing stories together through song, through healing. This is a very um, important way to um, get get members of our community the support that they need, so that they can, you know, be whole and and get two things, get whatever two both things are, get to them. <laughs> um, also, of course, beekeeping is not a thing that you often see in the African-American community. So, you know, I just applaud um, the My Sister's Keepers for, you know, finding that particular thing to do. And then also um, working with the agency to make music out of it. That just, I mean, because of course bees make music. Um, I also really love everything about this project. Um, I thought this strong public, public benefit was demonstrated throughout the application. I loved seeing the results from the past surveys, showing the value Renovair places on learning from its community. Um, I love the commitment to connection created by the project and a deepening of understanding of this little known community of women. Um, and uh, just, uh, it just also had a, um, I, I was found this really cool. <laughs> Next, we'll move on to the artistic and cultural vibrancy funding criterion, which is an organization's ability to create a relevant and engaging project. The results of the work that they are doing is story songs. And I mean, all songs can be stories, but not all stories can be songs. And so I just think that what they're doing, this work is, is, is high artistic and cultural vibrancy. I did score them strong in this um, section. They do pay their professionals. They do do um, surveys. And, um, and then the, the public is able to see what, they are, what they're doing. So I voted, I scored them strong. Um, and I would um, would add that um, I also thought it was strong in cultural and artistic vibrancy. I was impressed that the the idea of the project grew out of one woman's experience with a prior project and seeing the value of bringing the project back to her group 
of black female urban beekeepers. Um, just love that. Um, I also appreciated that the bees, honey, and the produce from the gardens is going to be available at the concerts. Of course, it's going to be available. And I want to buy some. Yeah, I noted um, strong as well, high strong. Um, and above what they've said that this will take the beekeepers hearts and the audience members hearts to new levels. Um, I really appreciate this project. The final criterion to discuss is organizational capacity and organization's ability to successfully plan for and manage its project. Start here. Um, I thought the organizational capacity was also strong. Um, they have a dedication to meaningful surveys, which is described and shown throughout um, the shared support materials. Um, the artists were compensated fairly. Their commitment to belonging is noted throughout the, this project. Um, so again, a strong in organizational capacity. I agree. Um, this is also a strong, strong capa organizational capacity. The two strong um, agencies being able to collaborate to do this, that's, um, that shows a lot. Strong as well. I don't have additional comments. Thank you, Melissa. Well, that will conclude our time for Renovare Music. Panelists, please submit your scores. And that was also our last review for the session. <laughs> Are there any info correction forms to share with the group? Looking to my fellow staff. I'm getting a no, okay. Thank you to our panelists for your thoughtful comments and your participation today. I'd like to give each panelist a moment to share any general feedback around the process or applications and remind audience members they can do the same via the online public comment form at cacgrants.org slash panel. Um, we can go in the same order as we did introductions if that's fine. And this is just any general last, last feedback or comments. Just comments, what wonderful work is being done in the county there. It just makes me want to come and visit for One World Day for, um, there's so many different things that I would like to see and, and do and just visit Cleveland. <laughs> I, yes, re-emphasize how um, vibrant the arts are in y'all's area. And it was very enjoyable to read about what y'all are doing and kind of comparing what um, y'all are doing with Chattanooga and seeing how we can strengthen as a county. And I will say the, the process of being a panelist um, was really straightforward organized. I did not feel stressed by it because I knew exactly what was expected expected of me. And I appreciate that. Yeah, I'll um, echo um, Joanne and Melissa's comments and, and um, also say, you know, I've, I've been doing this for a number of years with, um, with Cuyahoga County and um, notice a, a real, like a genuine improvement in the grant writing and like the way that the criteria is really incorporated um, into the the uh, grant applications. Um, so the, the projects are really strong. Um, I also would, would love to live closer so that I can participate in more of these. And, you know, I, I, um, I love to take ideas that I learned from these projects and try to apply it back home here in New Jersey. Thank you guys. You guys are all welcome to come visit us at any time. If you so desire, let us know. Um, panelists, can you please stay in the meeting as we close the live stream short, shortly? Um, listeners, panel continues at 1 p.m. tomorrow in our next Zoom session, and we will see you there. <laughs>